Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I have a project coming up on some really thick, uh, pretty thick anyway, a half inch and thicker, half inch and three quarter aluminum, and I'm going to use this Iron Man 230 with a spool gun for it. So, uh, last video I did on the Iron Man, I did, I tried it out on some steel first, and uh, here is the Iron Man running a open butt root and some 3 8 plate, got a really smooth arc, a really wide sweet spot, very easy to dial in the settings there. But what about aluminum? Aluminum is a lot harder to get the settings dialed in. So I'm going to hook this spool gun up and uh, kind of know what I'm in for because aluminum just exaggerates everything. It, it, everything that can go wrong on steel will just go wrong worse on aluminum. Gun angle, voltage and wire feed speed, gas flow, stick out, temperature of the metal all matter a whole lot more on aluminum than on steel. That's just the way it is. On aluminum, you want a spray transfer. You don't want that same bacon frying sound, and so that's what I'm after, but it's going to take me a while to dial it in. So, for starters, I've got to pull out the regular MIG torch there. It's got the steel wire, and then just stick the, the blank uh, end of this uh, spool gun in there. It's got kind of just a, a dummy end with no hole in it, but it still gets uh, its argon from that, from the ports on there with the double O-ring thing. And then uh, just to plug in the spool gun, and that's, that's that. Now I've just got to put the wire in. And the way this, uh, this Hobart gun is designed, it's uh, just got a little trigger release for the drive rollers. And uh, it's kind of tricky getting, uh, getting the wire in there and getting it fed into those uh, knurled rollers, but not too bad. You, you press the little red lever and it opens up a space and you got to straighten the end of the wire. But once you get it in there, then you can you know, bump the trigger and feed it through the feed tube. And on out the end. I took the te uh, tip off first before I did that. Now to get starting point, to get settings, a starting point. One way is using that new Miller app. And here I've got an iPhone with uh, the Miller Well Calculator app. And I select aluminum, and I select eighth inch because that's what I'm going to start off with. And it tells me 21 to 22 volts. And then it's got. I'm going to be using 035 to start with. So that's 350 to 400 inches a minute. And uh, if, if my machine doesn't read out that way, I can just count six seconds while the wire feeds at a zero, and, uh, and that's my inches a minute, basically. So if I speed out 24 inches at a zero, that's 240 inches. But I'm going to use this chart here that comes on the inside of the, uh, of the Iron Man. And uh, the chart tells me uh, 7 and 34, I believe, settings. Uh, some, yeah, 7 on the voltage and 34 on the wire feed speed. And that's what I'm going to try. I just know from using this thing a little bit, that's going to be a little high, but that's where I'm going to start. But you always want to push if you can. If you pull, you're going to get a sooty, uh, sooty covering over the puddle. Sometimes you have to pull, uh, but just know that it's not going to weld clean and shiny if you, uh, if, you, if you do pull. And I'm getting a little soot here, along with some little uh, spatter, which means generally... Uh, that's not that's not what I want. That's not a good smooth spray transfer. It's shorting out and, and uh, of course making a spatter. So I'm gonna just gradually get it dialed in and play with stick out lengths and and, and whatnot, gas flows until I get it until I get it better. So I'm just running bead after bead on this uh, eighth inch eleven gauge aluminum and, and uh, just getting it dialed in a little bit closer each time. Set sound. That's still not what I want, but it is getting a little bit better. That's the sound I want. That's the sound. So that uh, that was the eighth inch. Then I want to swap over to 364 wire and weld on some of this thicker stuff, this uh, quarter inch and thicker stuff. So uh, someone asked me to kind of show hand positioning a little bit more. So I'm, I don't have gloves on here so that you can see kind of a way that I would hold the torch and uh, pivot on the back of my hand so I can make quite a long run just pivoting like that and, and still hold really steady. So that's the settings that recommended for the 364. That's too much argon flowing. That's why you see all those, all that erratic arc and everything, and also too much wire. And all those BBs. That means it's not a very efficient transfer of metal. It's not a spray transfer, but that's what it recommended. So I'm going to trim it down here a little bit. Like I said, from 34, I'm going to go all the way down to maybe uh, 22 on the wire feed speed. And, uh, you know, just run some more beads and, and uh, try to make progress. I'm 
getting there. You see, it's starting to get that hiss, that hum. It's still fluttering a little bit. And I'm going to play around pulling here, and it's, the sound gets a lot better, but it's going to give me a little soot. You can see some oxide floating around in the puddle there. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's porosity or anything in there, but because uh, it might clean up just fine, but that's not ideal. But I'm, I'm playing with both ways just so I can learn here. Again, that's the sound I'm looking for. For some reason, uh, pulling it just worked better as far as that sound, even without changing anything. But I'm, I'm just tweaking the, tweaking everything, the gas flow, stick out length, gun angle, all that until I get this nice smooth spray right here. That's what I'm after. All right, so that's that's fairly close. That's getting settings are fairly close. So I've got another piece of scrap here. It's roughly uh, five sixteenths and some of it's quarter. It's a scrap piece, and I'm going to run a, a bead down in there. And so I'm I'm close. The sound is more like what I want. It sputters occasionally, but you know if you get it too much spray, where it's really smooth. The sweet spot's not very big, and it'll actually burn that wire up into the tip. So there's not much room to play with. By the time you get it really smooth spraying like that, you can trim back the wire a little bit more, and you're, you're burning up tips. I'd rather have a little a little sputtering here and there and, and not have to go through tips. And again, I may have to pull on this, uh, on this fixture I'm going to build, so I'm going to do a little practicing pulling and see how smooth that are. that's the sound I want but again I'm gonna have some soot on that all right here's another joint you see I wire brush the soot off and that you know if I have to pull on that fixture it's not gonna be the end of the world it's a weird shaped thing and I'm gonna to have to reach in and get to some things so I'm doing the I'm doing a little practice runs here so I won't have to practice when I get to the building the fixture See, I didn't change a thing. This is cool metal now. I let it completely cool off. That's kind of the way aluminum is. Just like, you know, temperature of the metal makes a huge difference. All right, after running that bead, I'm just going to run this short run on the corner now, but the metal's all hot. Now listen. Big difference, huh? That was nice and smooth, good sound. Same settings, you know. Um, I'm going to have to do some multi-pass welds. Here's a piece of scrap, really thick metal, like you know, two inch. The bottom's about two inches thick. Top to half inch thick. It's already got a bead on it. I'm just going to run a bunch of passes here, kind of tweak a little bit. You see, the metal was cold and uh, not changing the settings or anything. Not changing the stick out or the wire bead. Uh, it takes it a while to heat up and run smooth. So a good preheat on really thick aluminum uh, goes a long way. See, by the time I get to this last bead, it's starting to settle down. So because I'm going to have to do some multi-pass wells on that really thick stuff, I thought I'd give that a run. This I found really helpful. I was trying lots of things. It's just a, I cut a piece of Scotch Brite, put a hole in it for a diffuser up in there. I've done this with TIG before with good results and able to stick the electrode way out. But this allowed me to run a little bit less gas and still not get soot in some cases. So it was really helpful. I know it probably is a risk of contaminating little pieces in there. I'm just trying, just messing around with some stuff. But uh, that was just a piece of Scotch Brite. Next thing we're going to do is add 50-50 helium. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.